All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope our weekend is going on well. Welcome to the class. Yeah, please, let's try and just um, call on people on the WhatsApp group to join so that, um, so that we can start on time. So please just drop a message on the WhatsApp group that the meeting has started. Let people come on in so that <clears throat> everyone can you know, come in and we'll start. So just in some minutes, yes, we are going to we're going to start. Let's just wait for some more people to come in. Yeah, I understand that some people are also on the YouTube um, live stream. So yeah, it will be a good you know a good time to start. Maybe in ten minutes. So in the meantime, you can just unmute your mics and you know, just let me know that you can you can hear me clearly. Let me know that you can see my screen clearly as well. Please unmute, unmute yourself and let me know that you can hear me clearly and you can see my screen clearly. I know that I can hear myself clearly, but well, let me be sure that. All right, thank you. Yeah, Kachi, thank you. All right, so let's just wait for some more people to come in. I'm also trying to change the setting of the group so that anyone can join without um, without approval. Uh, thank you. All right, let's just let's push this to twenty then. Then we we'll start. On YouTube, we have um, about three people watching. We have a group of over 300 plus people, and you know, at least we should have up to 100 on the call. Yeah, thank you, Ebenezer. Thank you. All right, so um, I guess we'll just start. Every other person joining can, you know, they can catch up with us when they when they come in. Yeah, so good afternoon to everyone. It's good to have everyone back, and I'm um, I'm excited to host this meeting. And um, I I realized that some people, some new new um, people, are just joining us this week. Yeah, we held a class last um, last Saturday. And um, just a couple of people were there. Also, we were unable to record the class, but this one is being recorded right now and is also um, streaming live on YouTube. So I'll, I'll need to go over everything that was, you know, everything that we discussed last last week. And at the same time, we have new things to learn. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be sharing up to about three or four tools with you, AI tools and your applications, how you can use them to make your work easier, how to work smarter with um, those tools. Yeah, so some people, you know, we're asking a couple of questions after the last week meeting that um, the 
the video on academic research they want to know how to go about it they want to know how it is done okay so today you're going to you're going to see that i'm going to take you through how i came about that you know that was shown in the video and also you're going to look at yeah of course some common AI tools that almost everyone is aware of now and also we'll take a step further to see how um designers also can you know make use of just a tool that i'll be showing to you guys yeah so this is work smarter with ai with ai explorers and um we are going to be looking at the fundamentals of artificial intelligence we are going to be looking at <clears throat> the applications of art artificial intelligence as well and um i'd like to welcome everyone I think right now we have uh, about 11 of us on this call. We are still expecting more people, so please, probably on the group, just tell them, you know, drop it there that you're already on the call. And we are waiting for them so that we'll bring in people on this call. I know. So that you can ask questions. I'll try as much as possible to, you know, to be checking on our YouTube live chat as well so that. If there is any question, we can you know, trash it out here. Yeah. yeah, so as a way of introduction, yeah, we are here to explore the amazing world of artificial intelligence and um, how it applies to our daily lives. Trust me, things are happening and, and the world is evolving really fast. The way we were 10 years ago is not the way we're here right now. There are so many things that are coming into play right now, all thanks to artificial intelligence. Machines, machines are learning, and they are learning to become smarter, even smarter, smarter than humans, because they can learn faster than you. So trust them to be, you know, to be to be smarter than you. Yeah. So today we are going to look at how what artificial intelligence is all about, and at the same time, how we can apply artificial intelligence to work smarter. All right, so um, moving on, I'll share the objectives of this lesson with you. Our training objectives this morning are to understand the fundamentals of artificial intelligence and its applications in a couple of sectors we're going to look into. Of course, we can't exhaust you know, all the sectors we have, but at least we are going to look at how AI applies to so many sectors, so many fields of um, of career. Someone said he's trying to join, but he's not connecting. Oh, all right. So I don't know. Please, you can just try YouTube. If um, please, just tell them in the group if they are trying to join and it's not connecting. You can you can just be on YouTube. I think everyone should be able to join on YouTube. All right. So. As I was saying, the training objectives, you know, we are to understand the fundamentals of AI. I know there are some um, pro, so to say, on this call, you know, you are using AI already, you have, uh, you know, uh, you've even built your own model and, you know, you've built your chatbot and all of that. But I equally understand that there are some people on this call that are total novice when it comes to artificial intelligence. In fact, some people are just hearing it for the first time. So that is my assumption. So we are going to look right from the basics. We are going to see um, what artificial intelligence is about, the fundamentals, and now we move on to, to the applications. Also, we are going to, I'm going to introduce ChatGPT as an AI language model, which is like the commonest AI language model we all use right now. And as I said earlier, I'm going to assume that some people are on this call without knowledge of even chat gpt so we are i'm going to take you into consideration as well that you do not know even what chat gpt is all about yeah also we are going to look at some other um models used for different things used for uh, in diverse sectors also we're going to um <clears throat> explore practical use cases of AI in healthcare, in education, in finance, transportation, and some other sectors. We're going to do that today as well. Also, we are going to look at the ethical awareness of uh, in AI usage, 
what are the do's and don'ts, what are the things you should be careful of, what are the things you should watch out for. Because trust me, when some people will say AI is um, demonic, they will say he's working under the influence of a demon. All of that. We've had we've had several things when it comes to <clears throat> artificial intelligence. You know, I don't I don't blame people because knowledge is power, as they say. So if you don't know about something, you tend to <laughs> you tend to see it as uh, as a myth, as if um, it's you know it's something you cannot understand. When you don't understand something, it becomes you know like a superficial thing. So. We are going to see the um, ethical aspect of the usage of artificial intelligence. Also, we are going to uh, look at how we can empower ourselves, how to initiate your AI project, how to nurture and you know how to how to create this uh, curiosity-driven approach into exploring the world of artificial intelligence. There are so many tools out there. There are so many resources out there that you can actually use to make you know to 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 make your work easier so these are the things we are going to be looking into yeah so we are starting then more people are jo joining as we as we as we proceed so at least we have 15 people here now and i think on youtube just a quick check yeah we have about three people on youtube that's fine all right so let's look at what's artificial intelligence is all about ai 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 artificial intelligence robots we've been hearing different things and we really want to know what ai is all about and this lesson is going to break it down for you in the simplest way you you can understand mm. the, the the most simple the most simple way simplest way you can you can understand so it's like teaching a 10th grader what artificial intelligence is all about all right, so AI is like teaching computers to think and learn like humans. Of course, humans, we can think, we can learn. We think by, uh, we, we learn by thinking. Because what you see, you have your, you have your receptors, you have your eye, you have your ears to listen, you have your eye to see, and your brain processes all those things. You have your skin to feel. So your brain processes all those things, and as a result of that, you learn. So what we what AI is all about is like now teaching computers, teaching models, creating models to think and learn like humans. Yes, humans can learn, but when when you do that to machines, when you do that to computers, they can even learn faster than humans because they are machines. Of course, humans we have a lot of things you know that can affect our learning. So many things can affect our learning. We think about things, you know, even these, you know, troubles of lives and all of that. You have a lot to think about, but you can tailor what a machine would learn. Like, okay, this is the field I want you to learn. And I want you to be, you know, know almost everything about this field. And it is very possible. So artificial intelligence, just as the, as the, as the name implies, artificial intelligence. You are bringing an artificial way of learning into a computer. So AI is like teaching computers to think and to learn like humans. AI helps computers to perform smart tasks and make decisions. I've heard of this you know, um, myth of, okay, um, AI is going to start taking decisions for you. No, human is at the center of AI. Human is at the center of what AI learns. And there is nothing like overlearning. <laughs> There's nothing like, okay, AI will do what it is not expected to do. Robots will take over our streets. They will be fighting war for us. They will be, no. Human will always be out of the control. Just that they learn faster than humans. They are smarter than humans. So it, it helps um, perform smart tasks and make um, smart decisions. Also, let's look at AI in our everyday life. We interact with artificial intelligence every day, even when we do not know about it. And a, a very common example I use is your social media, when you're, when you're using your phones, when you're on Instagram, as an example, you realize that the, the, the model, the, um, the algorithm has been tailored in a way that it will show you posts you might like 
based on your interactions, based on your usage of that, that device, based on your activity on your device. If you have been checking Google for scholarships abroad, um, how to, how to, you want to study in Canada, you want to, you know, all those things, or you've been watching YouTube videos relating to that. Don't be surprised when you go on Instagram next time and the next thing, the next, the ads you're seeing are ads from agents, Canadian agents, study abroad agents, scholarship um, agents, and all of that. So you just realize that, uh, uh, in fact, maybe, maybe you're having a conversation on WhatsApp and the next thing you turn on, you, you, you go on Instagram and the next thing you're seeing is just posts relating to the conversation you're having with your friend, even though, you know, WhatsApp is as end-to-end -end encryption and, you know, your chats are not linked. But remember, Meta, they are the owners. So they can also, they can always use certain, um, you know, data, collect certain data based on your activity. And if you're using an iPhone, you see your, your, uh, your application asking you to allow tracking of other applications. If you allow that on your device, what you're saying is, okay, I'm granting you access to at least have insights on, you know, my activity, my interactions on other applications. And that can be used to, you know, to tailor the hard to, um, to suggest the things you might be interested in. The hard you're interested in, the, um, the post you might like, relevant post to your activities. So that is, you know, that is one way where we uh, interact with, artificial intelligence in our daily lives. Also, um, our media, music and video recommendations on streaming platforms. On YouTube, you just watched um, a study abroad video. And the next thing, you know, the next autoplay, to just play the next one for you, it's still, it's still the same niche. So it's a way that um, the, the machine has learned to always push um, relevant um, content to you. So once you are done with this, the next thing is also something related to that field because they see that, okay, the machine has discovered that this person has interest in seeing this thing. And as a result of that, you are going to be seeing, you know, things relevant to that, to content you interact with. All right, so let's look at AI in healthcare. How can, how is AI applied in healthcare? Right now, AI, um, applications can assist doctors in making diagnosis based on tests conducted. So when, okay, you've, conduct, you've conducted this MRI and the machine is looking into it and saying that this could be the, uh, the cause, this could be the, the disease, this is what we are looking at, this might be what we are looking at. Also, there are predictive models right now that can identify patients at risk of certain conditions. Okay, maybe the sugar level is high and, you know, the, the, uh, the system has been trained, has learned that, okay, if sugar level is this high, this uh, um, patient is at a high risk of, uh, of uh, type 2 diabetes. If um, this person has a medical history, has, has um, a, a family record of diabetes, and this person is overweight or is obese, then there is, you know, there's a likelihood that this patient is um, likely to develop this disease. So there are AI models doing that right now. Also, I'll go to education, AI in education. Now there are AI powered language learning apps that can adapt to your progress. As you're learning, solo learning is an example. As you're learning, you are being evaluated and your progress, let's say you fail the test now, it's going to suggest your co the learning content you, you have to revisit. Excuse me, based on your performance. Okay, you have done poorly in, um, in mathematics. The model can tell you to, it can tailor um, content based on those, those questions you missed so that you can relearn and it will track your, your learning progress. Also, there are virtual tutors right now. There are AI tutors that um, they are offering personalized study plans. Okay, your study need is, um, is, is your deficiencies in biology. 
and there are AI models that can, you know, push content that will ensure that this is your 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 need. And you can also set set your study plan. AI in education, I will also show when we get to the application part, I will show educators on this call how they can make use of AI, preparing lesson plans, preparing lesson content, generating um, instructional materials, and all of that. So we are going to look that as, into that as well. So AI in finance. Right now, AI is highly needed in the finance sector, is highly being used even in Nigeria right now, because um, now there are language models that can be trained in the area of finance such that they can detect fraud. If there is any suspicious transaction in, in banking, it's going to flag an error that, okay, this amount is too high, meaning that uh, there's something going on. There's something unusual going on. These are AI models that have been trained. A couple of years back, I mean, was it last year or two years ago, there was a ban on cryptocurrency um, activities in Nigeria that you're not allowed to trade cryptocurrency. And the way they trained their model is, okay, if there is any banking transaction that has anything related to cryptocurrency in their, in their narration, then flag that transaction as suspicious. So it's a way to detect fraud. In, 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 the, in the banking sector, in the finance sector. Also, there are AI-driven robot advisors now that can recommend investment strategies for you. There are robots used in trading, in um, Forex market. You can train your robots on when to enter the market, when to exit the market, when to take your profit, when to, um, when to stop your loss as well. So they are, um, they are, they are called robot advisors. They are robot, robot advisors that they can help you in trading. So that is another application of AI in finance. We are going to look at AI in transportation as well. Right now, in um, an application of AI is in self-driving driving cars. Now they are taught to, they have a lot of sensors. They are taught on how to navigate traffic and avoid collisions. And the way they are trained, the way they've been taught, nothing is going to make them collide with other vehicles. Only if other vehicles are, you know, you know, interfere. So they've been trained in a way that, okay, these are your sensors. This is what this sensor is doing. When you see at this certain distance, you stop. When the light turns red, you stop. Even um, um, our traffic management system can you know, our traffic lights, as we call them, they are AI driven as well, that study that, okay, when there is a lesser traffic in this end, okay, you can turn red, so that uh, when there's lesser traffic, you can turn green, so that they'll go. When there is higher traffic, you turn red, so that other people will pass, so, so as to avoid congestion. So all those things are AI driven because they are machines that have been taught. Remember we said teaching computers how to think and learn. So there are machines that have been taught on certain things. They've been trained on, okay, do this, do this. In fact, there are so many things around us that we do not even know that are controlled by artificial intelligence. Also, we can now use AI as virtual assistant. If you, if you, if you are on Fiverr or you're on Upwork, you see virtual assistant as a service. These are services people offer and they get paid for it. So you can now create your chatbot, you can create your, <clears throat> your assistant, your virtual assistant. A typical example is a um, voice controlled assistant on our smartphones. They are AI controlled, Siri, Alexa, using even Google voice, voice um, prompt. You can just say, say a command and the next thing, your phone, is responding to your command, you know. So the world is going to that level. We are we are that phase now where we now have virtual assistants. Someone from Google doesn't have to be present where I am before I navigate certain things on my phone. Someone from Apple doesn't have to come to my place to do things. Alexa and Siri, in this case, are um, they are virtual assistants. 
Siri is a virtual assistant to happen in compression. So if you want to do anything and, you know, instead of you going to hire someone to do it for you, you can create chatbots now. You can create virtual assistant that even on your website, you can, you can integrate chatbots that will serve as your customer service representative when you are not online. Now, I think um, WhatsApp is having, you know, some integrations. They are allowing some integrations before now they don't. So that you can have um, virtual assistant. If you are running a business, you can have chatbots that will respond to customer needs. Okay, I want to do this, 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 this. How do I do it? Then it's going to make suggestions for you based on what it has been trained on. So you don't have to be, you know, online every time doing, or you don't have to spend money on hiring customer service representative. Apologies to every customer service rep on this call. We're not taking your job, you know. We're just teaching you to be smarter. All right, so um, we're going to look at AI in gaming as well. Right now, we play against AI opponents in our video games, you know, and um, you can teach them on what to do. Give them strategies. Okay, when it is this time, we strike. And, you know, even when you're sleeping, you can have, have an AI character. Uh, if you have heard about the metaverse, you know, there are virtual reality games now. There are virtual, um, how, how will I explain that? There are virtual worlds. Let me just say that, you know, where you have characters and your characters are the ones representing you in that, in that realm. This is nothing, um, nothing spiritual. I'm just, you know, it's just, it's just AI. It's just technology. All right. Also, you can animate your characters using AI techniques, and you can use your characters for, um, for, for gaming. If you are, if you are a game person on this call, and as far back as you know, Pro Evolution Soccer, FIFA. You tend to build your characters, isn't it? You can build players, and the player you can use the player has you know, with all other characters that have been built on that system. You can use your player to play. What do we call it? I've forgotten the name. Um, um, become a legend or something. Yeah. So that is that. AI in writing and creativity. This is one interesting part that almost everyone should learn. Uh, no, everyone should learn. Not even almost. Everyone should have an idea of how. AI applies in writing and creativity. When I said earlier that machines learn faster than humans, this, this, this is what I was trying to explain. Because if you are to learn, if you are to write, it can take, it can take me up to 30 minutes, one hour to you know, come up with a, a, a comprehensive writing. With the help of AI now, you do not have to, to rack your brain for too long. You can just tell AI what you want. And before you know it, the model has been trained to, to accept your thinking and make it smarter. So before you know it, the model is going to generate something really nice for you. People using ChatGPT by now should know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so AI generated creative writing, such as poetry, short stories. You can write a book using AI. We'll get into the practical parts so you see what I'm saying. You can write in, in less than 10 minutes. I can come up with a book with 10 chapters. And, you know, it's something I can sell. It's something I can, um, you know, upload for people to read. It's something I can sell on Amazon Kindle, you know, as, 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 um, as it, I can, you know, I can make money from it. That's what I'm just saying. Also, AI can create art and music. And you can explore um, new styles and compositions. Yeah, AI in creativity. In a minute, I'll just share. Yeah, some. I'll just switch my screen to something I have created using something. You know, some of my AI creations when it comes to creativity in AI. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm switching my screen to this. So these are things I have created using AI. These are things some people will print, they will frame, and before you know it, they are selling it in traffic. 
people will buy it because they look beautiful, isn't it? So people will buy them, and you know, they're making money. So these are these are AI generated um, artworks. This is using AI to, you know, to bring out the creativity in you. All of these were generated using just a text prompt. This is what I want. Can you give it to me? Then before you know it, you have you have something beautiful to look at. Yeah, this particular artwork, you know, was done a couple of months ago, and I I enhanced it, I edited it, and I sold it honestly because. I even have a printing in my house that I have no print. So these are things, these are things you can use AI to do. If you if you are on a high quality video, you see how sharp it is, even though I've announced it using Photoshop and all of that. But you know, there are so many things you can do using AI. This is just one of them. This is another one. This is not a real character, she does not exist. This is just a product of artificial intelligence. I call her Shaki, I gave her a name. So all right, so um also. Um, yeah, this as well, this is a painting that he I did. I can claim ownership because it's a generative art. I have every right to, you know, do whatever, whatever I want with it. Only if the AI tool you are using says otherwise. But learning all of these things can make you do this. These are artworks that you can sell to people. That you can, you know, you can create a heart gallery using this. These are generative images, and they are unique. They do not exist. They do not exist anywhere else in this world. So because it, it they, they were created from just text prompts, like okay, I need this. Do this for me. And before you know it, this is a guy selling orange in Lagos traffic. You can see the yellow bus at the back. You can see oranges on his arm. You can see people walking by. You know. Amazing things, amazing stuff. So let's go back to, I will switch back to um, to my slide. All right. So we are going to go into some applications of AI and how we can use them. And if you are on this call last week, we dwelled more, we dwelled more on um, chat GPT. So, of course, today we are going to look further beyond ChatGPT. Even though I'm still going to introduce ChatGPT, then we'll come back to you seeing what you, how you can use Googlebot. Googlebot is like a major competitor of ChatGPT right now because in OpenAI came up with um, ChatGPT. I knew Google was definitely going to push something because if you're using ChatGPT, I cannot remember the last time I searched something on, for something on Google. It's stressful. What Google does is just to crawl the internet and see for relevant um, suggestions and give you suggestions. You have to click on those links to look for to see what you're looking for. ChatGPT is so specific; it's going to go deep and pick out your content for you. So Google came up with theirs, and you know they were never going to sleep on that. They came up with Google Bad. We are going to look at Google Bad as well and see how bad Google Bad is. <laughs> All right, so um, then also we'll look at Jenny. Jenny is an AI trained for academic research. If you have seen that video that I shared with you guys, AI for academic research, how you can do this, do that. Jenny AI can do that for you. Lastly, we're going to look at AutoDraw. And I've, I've shown you generative arts created already. So we are going to look at AutoDraw for graphic design. Graphic designers on this call, you're going to learn how to use that. So quickly, we are going to run through ChatGPT. Look at some, you know. I'll just pick some of the prompts I've um, created here, and also we are going to compare ChatGPT with um, with um, Googlebot. I will see which one is better, or which one applies to what you want to do better. All right, so um, ChatGPT. If you're on this call last week, I introduced this. And for you know, for the benefit of those that are just joining us and those that have not even heard of ChatGPT before, I'll need to do a recap of what this language model is all about and how you can access it. All right, so ChatGPT is an AI language model developed by OpenAI. OpenAI is a company, and um, it's just one of their tools developed, one of their products. 
ChatGPT can have interactive conversations with humans, just like a chat. ChatGPT is just like your friend that you chat with on any of the chatting platforms. Hi, how are you today? I'm fine. This, this, and you know, you always have, you always get the response for whatever you write. So in a minute, we are going to look into the, the, the practical aspect of ChatGPT. So how does ChatGPT work? ChatGPT uses deep learning algorithms to understand and generate human-like responses. What your friend, even more than what your friend is going to give you, ChatGPT is going to help you with it. Also, ChatGPT is trained on vast amounts of text from the internet. It has learned, you know, um, so many things and it has been trained on so many things, so many areas all over the internet. So if you say, I need this, before you know it, ChatGPT is going to crawl the internet and get you something similar to what you want to, what you're looking for. And it's going to present it to you as if this is the exact response you need. Unlike Google search, that you need to go from one site to another site, copying content, a lot of irrelevant ones and all of that. So GPT has been trained on vast amount of text from the internet and also We are going to look at ChatGPT applications, what it can do. ChatGPT can answer questions on various topics. It can provide recommendations and suggestions. And it can, you know, it can help you with recommendations. For example, movie recommendations, you go, you're looking for a certain movie and it's going to give you, just in seconds, you're going to see suggestions. So getting started with ChatGPT, how do we start with ChatGPT? You can go to openai.com and or go directly to this URL, chat.openai.com, and you need to sign up for an account. Once you sign up for an account, you gain access to, to the um, application. And once you gain access to the application, you just type in your questions, which are called prompt, and you start chatting with ChatGPT. You start getting responses for every prompt you, you impute. All right, so um, what are the advantages of ChatGPT? It responds quickly and accurately. It's, ad it's available 24-7, and it is always ready to chat with you. For example, you can ask ChatGPT for weather updates. It would go into you know looking for your location and as, as a result of that it's going to give you weather updates limitations of chat gpt of course chat gpt may provide incorrect and nonsensical answers at times but trust me 98 99 percent of its responses if you know how to construct your prompt you're going to get an idea you're going to get a value for your prompt definitely it's going to be the response for you that would um, apply to what, what you're looking for. Also, another limitation is it may not fully understand the context of you know, what you want to do and may not be able to follow complex instructions. If your instructions are too complex, you will get the model confused and as a result of that, oh, on YouTube, people are complaining that the um, the sound is not clear. The presentations are the, the slides are blurry. No, the slides are not blurry. Adjust your your video output, your setting. Adjust your um, video quality to you know something higher so that you can see. If you're on YouTube, please just adjust your um your video quality so that you can you can see and also the sound is very clear because i just listened to that here so this just increase the volume you should be able to hear us clearly all right thank you so uh, you may not fully understand your context you know and may be unable to follow complex instructions
you are saying um, um, ChatGPT solve this you know complex mathematical problem, it might get confused. So that is one limitation as well. So what are the tips for chatting with ChatGPT? Be clear and specific with your questions or prompts. If needed, provide context to get more accurate responses. It's like having a chat with a friend. So you can always build on your previous your previous conversations. Yeah, so um, if needed, provide context to get more accurate responses, as I said. As I said. And we are going to look at um, you know some real world examples of applications of ChatGPT. Um, you can use ChatGPT as a chatbot for customer support. It can help you in writing content. If you are a content creator, ChatGPT is your go-to guy when it comes to writing content. <clears throat> and also, um, it can help in personalizing recommendations in e-commerce. If you if you own a store, you can look for you know, relevant things to consider. In your in your e-commerce store. So, what are the ethical considerations? This is um, this is general to all AI applications. It is not just ChatGPT. AI applications like ChatGPT need to be used responsibly. You need to use them responsibly. Do not abuse the use. Avoid the using of AI for harmful or misleading purposes. If you're using AI for the sole purpose of um, um, looking to defraud people or looking to hack a website, all of that, you know, those are irresponsible ways of using AI and they are misleading. So please be careful. And also do not use AI to spread misinformation. So in a minute, we are going to look at um, applications of ChatGPT and um, other AI tools, just as we have listed earlier, all of these AI tools are things we are going to look into today. And um, these are prompts that I have constructed. These are prompts that have been constructed and we are going to use them in our ChatGPT playground. I have about 10, but I don't think we have enough time to cover all of them, but at least just to see maybe one or two how you know how they how it works. Especially if you are new, if you are new to ChatGPT, I'm going to um, show you that. And also, as I'm working on ChatGPT, I'll also be using Google Bard so that we can compare uh, the results. So we'll see which one works better. So you can start doing your comparison right now. All right, so let's go for general office procedures. And this is the prompt. This is the, these are the two prompts I have come up with. Compose an email to inform all team members about the upcoming meeting. This is weird because the upcoming meeting, what meeting are you even talking about? So let's see how ChatGPT is going to respond to this and how Googlebot is going to respond to this. So I'll just copy this and I'll switch my tab to my ChatGPT. Yeah, if you're looking at how to sign up on ChatGPT, I already, I already gave you the link to use. So you go to the link and you sign up for an account. You can be asked to do a, you know, a form of verification. Once you do that, um, you, you have access to this you know, interface. So I'll just, go, I'll, I'll, I'll just do this. I'll just paste my prompt that I've copied and I'll just press enter. All right, so in less than five seconds, ChatGPT has composed an email for me. I asked ChatGPT to compose an email to inform all team members about the upcoming meeting. What meeting are you even talking about? We don't even know. So, okay. So the subject is saying upcoming team meeting. You can, when you copy this out, you can change the subject to suit whatever meeting you are holding, the date and the time. You need to update this as well. So the body of the mail, dear team, I hope this email finds you well. I'm writing to inform you about an important upcoming meeting that will be held on this particular date and time. You replace this with your date and your time. This meeting is essential to discuss some crucial updates and developments within our project. Agenda of your meeting. 
now it has given you suggestions. Recap of the project's progress and milestones achieved so far, presentation of new strategies and approaches to overcome current challenges, team collaboration and workflow. Okay, someone is requesting to join. All right, sorry. I just confirmed. All right, so. Um, okay, someone is requesting for a link to ChatGPT. Open, uh, just to chat.openai.com. Also, um, these are the, this is the agenda of the meeting. And there's the closing part of the mail. Please ensure that, okay, your active participation and input during this meeting are highly encouraged as we value each team member's insight. The success of our project relies on effective communication and collaboration, you know, all of that. So these are just stories. So looking at this now, I can say that, I can say that I want this shortened let's say the mail is too long and i want it shortened by um 60 percent and i'll just tap on enter so let's see so it is shortening the mail now and you see all those all the stories we have here the active participation is this blah 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 you can see that this has been shortened and what we have here is just looking forward to a productive discussion you put your name your title your organization your contact information and that is it if i want to go further and say that I, I let's say this agenda now this meeting is going to um let's say span for one hour and i want to prepare the agenda for one hour let the meeting agenda okay i can just say the meeting is going to last for an hour design the agenda for a one hour meeting All right so and this is it agenda for one hour team meeting <laughs> this is this is an agenda and it's telling you welcome and introduction will be for five minutes briefly welcome all team members it's even telling you what to do Introduce the purpose and goals of the meeting. Number two, project progress review. These are this is these are the agenda that is, it has suggested earlier. So progress uh, project progress challenges and roadblocks. You know, with their time, it has allotted time for each of everything you are going to do. And it's even telling you remember to stay on schedule to ensure that all agenda items are covered within the one half time frame. Encourage active participation and open communication amongst the members. So this is just brilliant. If you are using ChatGPT for things like this, you know, in no time you are going to get what you want. If you are to develop this, it's going to take you at least an hour. In less than five minutes, we have come up with all of this. So it's just for you to read through and adjust it to your own needs, to your office needs. Okay. This is what I want. I want to be specific in certain areas. So that is that for the first prompt example. So I'll just do something. I'll copy the prompt and I'll go to Google Bad. So we want to see which one is going to do it better. This is Google Bad. Google Bad can be accessed bad.google.com. It's open source. Just um, use your Google account then. You're in. I'll just paste this on Google Bad. And I'm waiting for a response. First thing, Google Bad is slower in responses than ChatGPT. Yeah, Google Bad came up with this. Here is an email to inform all team members about the upcoming meeting. Subject, upcoming meeting, project status update. It has defined the, the meeting for us. Project status update, even, if, even though this is not what you want. Hi team, I'm writing to inform you of our upcoming meeting to discuss the status of the project. The meeting will be held on August 8, 2023 at 10 a.m. in the conference room A. The purpose of this meeting, this, 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 I've attached the meeting agenda to this email. So, all right, so this is it. Here are some additional tips for, you know, attaching meeting agenda. So I want to say that kindly provide an agenda for this meeting. So we want to see the conversational um, 
um, attribute of Google Bard as well. We have seen that of ChatGPT. It can build on previous conversations. So let's see for Google Bard. So I need agenda for the meeting. Boom. Status update meeting, date, time, location, attendees, your whole name and other team members, agenda, one, two, three, four, notes. So you can also add additional items. In no time, you have everything set up. And that is it. And another thing about these AI models. Oh, sorry, I've not been sharing my Google Bad and no one has caught my attention to it. I've not been sharing my Google Bad tab. So this is Google Bad, sorry. Um, compose and this was the prompt I sent. And I have to just take that again. Let me open a new chat so that you see what I just did. Someone should have caught my attention to the fact that you're not seeing my... Okay, so I'll just paste this and I'll click enter. So this is Google Bad. Google Bad is accessible on bad.google, bad, not B-A-D, B-A-R-D, bad.google.com. Yeah, so it has come up with a mail to inform team members of the upcoming meeting. Upcoming team meeting, hi team, I'm writing to inform you. These are the things to discuss. So you just look at this and just, you know, fine tune it to your taste. And also I said, kindly prepare an agenda for this meeting. So Google Bad is going to come up with an agenda for a meeting. And this is it, meeting agenda. Your name, your, the attendees, your name, team member name, and the agenda. And you know, that is it. So quickly, let's run to, let's go back to our slide. So we have seen a prompt on, on general office procedures. And we are also going to look at, okay, how ChatGPT can help a student in solving certain things, writing essays, you know, even sending mails to maybe your professors, you want to apply for something, ChatGPT, Google Bad, they, they both can help you in doing certain things. So I'll just say, I'll just pick this, help me brainstorm ideas for my history assignment on World War II. And World War II, I can't remember anything about World War II. So always go to a new, if you're starting a new conversation, it is recommended that, um, okay, so we're back on chat GPT. It is recommended that you start a new chat when you're starting a new, a, an entirely new conversation. So you open a new chat and I'll paste this. Let me brainstorm ideas for my history assignment on World War II. In seconds, ChatGPT is going to crawl the internet and give you ideas. And we can see biographies of key figures, battle analysis, home front and propaganda, Holocaust and genocide, technology and weapons, role of women, impact on heart and culture, global impact, you know, resistance movement. So all of these are just based on your prompt. What you requested for was ideas for your assignment. So let's say that I want to write an essay on um, technology and weapons, number five, used during World War II. So, okay, I'll say write, um, write a 350 word essay on number five. You can see how specific I am. I can just say, okay, number five. So it will go back to this and pick number five and say, okay, number five is technology and weapons. So what do we have on number five? Let's see. Okay, so there's an error. This could be due to network or anything. So anytime you see this error, you just regenerate. So once you do that, as you can see, is generating your essay for you. Okay, and now there is something I just realized that my number five, when I said you should use it responsibly and you need to really, really be careful. See what just happened now. Write a 350 word essay on number five. What's my number five again? Technology and weapons. 
see the essay my um Tajipit is writing for me. He's writing on the role of women, which is number six. So you need to be very, very careful. I can get hungry and tell ChatGPT to say that you just wrote the wrong essay. I requested for an essay on number five. I'm getting angry and I'm saying, fix that, it's an exclamation. So let's see, I'm angry. And now, ChatGPT is apologizing. Apologies for the confusion. Let me provide you with an essay focusing on number five, technology and weapons during World War II. This is, these are things where you need to consider. You need to know what you're doing. So if you are relying on ChatGPT and you're just saying, okay, just write on number five for me. And you see this and you just copy, broom, and you paste it on, on, um, on your Microsoft Word and you submit your essay. Zero. So this is these are these are controls. These are things you should. This is where the human brain comes in. Remember, I said they, they they've been trained. Yes, but see the mistake you just made. Mixing of number five, not five and six are not the same. So mixing of number five for number six. So and now it has corrected itself just because I spotted the error, and now I have an essay on technology and weapons during World War Two. I don't want to dwell so much on ChatGPT today because I I believe many people, many of us already know about ChatGPT. But I understand that some people are just entirely new to the whole thing. So that's why we are going over all these things. So I will run to my Google Bad and I'll do the same. So let's see. Let me brainstorm ideas for my history assignment on World War II. I'll click on enter. Bad is checking and trying to come up with something for me. All right, so sure, I can help you brainstorm ideas for history assignment of World War II. Here are some topics you could explore. The causes of World War II, the major battles of World War II, the role of technology in World War II. Now we are seeing similarities. The Holocaust. We have the same thing on chat GPT. Just, just talking about the Holocaust. All right. Yeah, so um, the women's role. The role of women, remember? That was the same thing we had in ChatGPT. So, okay, because this was not numbered, because this is not numbered, I want to tell, I'll just copy this, the role of World War II, the role of technology. So I want to say, write a 350 word, 350 word essay on the role of technology in World War II. I can just decide to put that in, you know, in the code. I think ChatGPT is, is I, I think Bada, uh, Google Bad has done it in a smarter way so that it's not going to mix up numbers. So you didn't number it for me. You just had to, you know, just write, um, just write it in bullet points. So okay, the role of technology in World War Two. World War Two was, you know, I, I'm I, I'm not ready to read through all of this, but I'm pretty sure that. This is a 350 word essay. If you copy it and you and you uh, check. Also, in a minute, please, uh, I'll just need to stop sharing my screen. Then I'll I want to share the entire window. I want to share the entire window so that we can see. Because switching switching from tab to tab is some of so I'll just share yeah the entire window. Good. All right, kindly confirm, kindly confirm that you can see my screen and you can see my entire window. Please confirm that you can see my... Yes. yes. All right, all right, thank you. Very... All right, thank you. So this would be easier to switch, yeah, to switch tabs. Okay, so... um. So we have checked ChatGPT, we have checked um, Google Bird, and we have seen which one, you know, we can make our we can make our choices by doing that, by by by, by checking through. So 
I'll just go back to my slide and let me just, okay, maybe for teachers, for educators, let me just pick because you know, I used to be a teacher and I think I'm still a teacher. So I'll just um, copy this, create a lesson plan for a high school science class about the solar system. Is that, is that an interesting topic? Let me just, solar system is broad and is general. So I want to stretch the, the knowledge of ChatGPT and Googlebot. And what I want to do is to look for something uh, more, so something I can bring home, something Nigerian. So something Nigerian. And doing that, I, um, let's say, I want to, write a write a one hour write a lesson plan let me just say that a lesson plan for a one hour lesson for, for a one hour class on hmm, sorry i'm in the science field but i'm trying to look for something general okay on political apathy political Apathy. This is a topic in government or civic education or something. On political apathy, write, write lesson plan for, for a one hour class on political apathy. Let me say the class, the lesson is for SS1. Student. I says one is used in Nigeria, yeah? So let's see. A lesson plan for a one hour class on political party. If you're a teacher on this call, you should know how stressful it is to write lesson plan and lesson notes. All right. So political party, the subject is social studies. <laughs> Probably it's a, it's, a, it's a topic in social studies as well. Or you can change that to civic education, whatever, or government. Grade SS1, that's the class. Duration, one hour. Objective, by the end of this lesson, students will understand the concept of political party, recognize its consequences on society, and explore ways to address and prevent it. These are the materials needed. Introduction, greetings and warm-up, brainstorming activity, introducing political party. And now you have the definition of what you're looking for. They define political party as the lack of interest, engagement, or... So even what the teacher is going to do, you have it already. The main body of your lesson plan, courses of political party, you know, these are the things you need. Consequences of political party. This is for a one-hour class, and it's even allotting time for you. Conclusion, strategies to address political party. Encouraging political education and awareness, which is what you're doing, promoting promoting civic engagement, you know, reflection, question and answer, homework. And that is it. You have your lesson plan. If you want to go ahead to say, okay, create a lesson note for this lesson. So we are creating a lesson note and the lesson note is looking like a lesson plan as well. I can say, okay, create um, a 500 word lesson note explaining all the highlights of the lesson. You want story, you get story. It's going to write objective. Um, the, now, okay, so the main body now, defining political party. Now, if you read closely, this is another control. Defining political party. ChatGPT is now telling you what to do. After the introduction, the concept of political party will be introduced. It will be explained, telling you what is going to happen in your class. But this is not what you want. What you really want is to get the notes to give to the student. Isn't it? So I want to want you to 
we hit the topic notes to be given to the student in this lesson. So once you do that, let's see, let's see the results we get. Okay, so introduction, welcome to the, you know, you don't have to put this in the notes. But right now we have something that looks like a note. What is political party? Political party refers to the lack of interest. That is, you know, that is what you want. Causes of political party, you have the bullet points, you have the points. You can develop on this and you can as well give this as a note. But make sure you always check to be sure that this is exactly what you want to do. That check is very important, you know, so that you're not going to, you know, go into error. Yeah, so I think that is that for teachers, digital marketers. Um, I'll, I'll combine digital marketers, content creators together, and I'll just look for one example to give. For content creators, for digital marketers, for people going into, um, Market, social media marketing, all of that. You can also use ChatGPT. It, it is actually a very great tool that you can use in creating content, in you know, creating marketing um, suggestions for you. You know, see things you can apply to your marketing campaign so as to maximize your result. So quickly, I'll just construct a prompt. I will say that as a Okay, let me just say, I am starting up a YouTube channel. I don't even know where to start. Kindly suggest 10 niches. Okay, 10 profitable niches. I can consider, all right, so once I send that, starting a YouTube channel can be an exciting adventure and choosing a profitable niche is a crucial step. Here are 10 profitable ideas to consider for your YouTube channel. Personal finance and money management, fitness and healthy living, tech reviews and tutorials, travel and adventure, gaming and game reviews, beauty and makeup, do it yourself and home improvement, uh, food and cooking, personal development and motivation. These are suggestions. These are things, these are niches you can look into. So I can just go further and say that, okay, great. I want to go into tech reviews and tutorials. How do I start? So you define your niche. Tech is a vast field, so it's essential to narrow down your focus. Decide whether you want to review smartphones, laptops, gadgets, software, or provide tutorials on specific topics like coding, graphic design, or video editing. So these are suggestions. You need to narrow down your niche because tech, tech is a very broad field. Is it just um, phone reviews, smartphone reviews you want to do? Is it laptop reviews you want to do? Is it um, um, software? Is it um, coding classes you want to provide tutorials on? Is it graphic design? Is it video editing? So these are just suggestions on what to do. Market research. Research other successful tech channels in your chosen niche to understand what type of content they produce, how they engage with the audience, and what makes them stand out. I'll show you one leverage, one, one advantage Googlebot has for this kind of a thing. Create a brand identity. Develop a channel name, a logo, you know okay so let's say we have we have um we have decided on which niche we are looking into let's say we want to do um smartphones review and okay let's say i want to go into smart phone review i need Channel name suggestions 
for my channel. All right, so once you send that, let's see. Great choice. Smartphones reviews are a popular niche on YouTube, and there is always a demand for up to date and blah 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 blah. So you have these suggestions. These are names. These are channel name suggestions. Your All right, just to confirm, can everyone hear me and can they see my screen? Yes, I can hear you. All right, thank you. And as well, can you see my screen as well? Yes, I can. All right, thank you. All right, so let's let's continue. So I just wanted to be sure that um, that we are still live on YouTube as well. So these are these are um, suggestions. These are name channel name suggestions that you can look into. Um, tech phone reviews, smartphone savvy, gadget gurus, mobile tech insights, the phone explorer, uh, smartphone sensei, tech talk mobile, mobile masters. Um, device digest, phone prodigy, phone prodigy, etc. So you can just, you know, if you're not, um, if you're not okay with all of this, just say, um, I need shorter names. Let's see, the names are too long. Of course, before you know it, you can see phone vibe, tech bite, phone IQ, gadget scope, mobile sense, smart rev, device dive. Tech view, form, you know. So it goes on and on like that. Remember, you're having a conversation. Everything started from, I want to create a YouTube channel. I'm a bit confused. Advise me on what to do. Now you are going to that level of creating your channel, giving it a name. You can also say that, great. You can also say that, um, okay, great. I'll go with tech bite. I need a channel. Of course, when you're creating a YouTube channel, you need a channel description for my. Okay, I can just say I need a channel description. I think that should be fine. Congratulations on choosing the name tech bite first. Blah, blah, blah. So it is now giving us a channel description, even with images. Welcome to TechBytes, your go-to destination for bite-sized and insightful smartphone reviews. At TechBytes, we believe in providing you with, oh, I don't have time to read all of this, but this is a great way to set up your channel. Many of your, yeah, you know, when you're writing things like descriptions, you are going to be restricted to a certain number of, um, number of words. So you can just come here and say, uh, make the description or just summarize the description. Summarize the description in, let's say, 100 words. So let's see. All right, so you have it. Welcome to Tech Bytes, your bite size. And you have everything summarized in 200 words. If you copy this to any of your text fields, all you have is 100 words. When you're doing your word count, it should give you hundred. It should give you hundred words. I don't have a you know. That's how opening up. All right. So that is that. That is one way to um, set up a YouTube channel as a content creator, as a um, as a as a marketing person, so as a digital marketer. You can also. Someone wants to join. Sorry, I need to. Wow, I have quite a number of people trying to join. Sorry, I just admitted all of you, sorry. Okay, yeah, so, um, so let's move on to research. Sorry, content creators, I could not dwell more on, you know. 
digital marketers, yeah, you want to write a blog post, you want to write a web content, you can always use ChatGPT or Googlebird to do that. Content creators have also done something on that. I've summarized your part for you. So research and data analysts, please, everybody should pay attention to this because one way or the other, we need to do a little bit of research and we need to analyze data in our everyday lives. So ChatGPT offers a way to bring in your data and you can make sense out of that data. And I'll do this using a spreadsheet. I'll do this using a Google spreadsheet. I have just, um, you know, I came up with just this dummy data. I have states, I have number of schools, and I have number of teachers. <clears throat> and I have these few states, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six states, and these are the number of schools and the number of teachers in 2021. So I'll just copy this data. I'll highlight and copy my entire data. And I'll go to ChatGPT. I'll create a new conversation. And I'll paste. See how it has pasted? Like, you know, we just have this. So I'll just enter. So let's see what happens. ChatGPT is saying that, OK, it seems you have provided a table with data on the number of schools and teachers in various states as of the year 2021. This is what my data is all about. I have not said any other thing. What I did was just to copy my data and paste it here. So I want to tell ChatGPT, I said, to start with, to start, organize my data into a into a table this should look familiar to what we have here it should look similar to what we have here so we have our data in tables on ChatGPT. So I can now start saying some things. I want to make ChatGPT think for me. And I want to say that what is the average number of teachers in all states in 2021? The average number of teachers in all states in 2021, I want to know what that is. OK, so this guy here is telling me what to do. Let's calculate. To find the average number of teachers in all states, you need to sum up the number of teachers in each state and then divide it by total number of states. Let's calculate the total number of states, six. And he's doing the calculations for me. Adding all number of teachers and dividing it by six and giving me 3613 point. Six seven. This is human population. You cannot have decimals. So I'll just say three six one four. So across these six states in twenty twenty one, the average number of teachers uh, uh, three thousand six hundred and fourteen teachers. That is smooth. You don't have to start racking your head and you know start doing that. Let 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 me do one more thing. Let's say um. Okay. Number of schools. I want to do something on. Um, okay. Let me just say that. What is the teacher, or let's say, what is the school to teacher ratio in or your state? So this is a way to make your GPT think. Of course, we have number of schools and we have number of teachers in your state. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. To find the school to teacher ratio in your state, you simply divide. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Don't worry. Just give me the result. So the result is okay, school to teacher ratio in your state is number of schools to number of teachers, which is 2.5666. So to the school to school to teacher ratio in your state in 2021 the, is approximately 2.566, meaning there are around 2.57 schools 
can say three schools for every teacher in the state which is actually not a good one three schools to one teacher hmm. okay yeah it's actually a good one more schools then but let's let's start, let's start teachers i don't know how to do the analysis but that is this is what i want i want to do it for every other state i can do that so this is one way data analysis this is one way to bring in um your excel data to chat gpt mind you there are several other tools in fact gpt is not even a recommended tool for data analysis because it doesn't know anything about data analysis there are certain tools that you know are trained certain models that are trained specifically for data analysis all right so graphic designers ui ux designers also you can use um, either googlebad or chat gpt i'll show you some other ai tools very soon that you can use to generate concept ideas and to you know come up with something really nice and i i think i mentioned to someone last on our last call that ai now can be used as um plugins there are several hubs for plug that, that serve as plugins on figma on um, adobe xd as well so that if you're if you're ui ux designer you can use those plugins to you know to work on your designs you can just say that okay um what type of font is suitable for um you know um okay let's use ChatGPT. let's see what ChatGPT will come up with i just thought of something so i want to do this daniel abu your hand is raised do you want to say something All right, so if you're not saying anything, yeah, um, I'll just go on to one major challenge, graphic designers, designers in general, one major challenge we face is font choice. It can be it can be funny at times, you know. Deciding on the on the exact on the exact type of font, the exact choice of font font you want to use for your design. So I want to create a logo for uh, a for children party. I'm just you know just coming up with this. Can you suggest a type? Uh, can you suggest some typography? choices for me okay. i want to create a logo for a children's party when you are creating for you know a children's party you want to choose typographic that is fun playful and easy to read there are some typography choices that could work well now it's telling you comic sans doodoo font chubby font lollipop font and all of that this is a good way to you know to to come up with your typography so that you won't need to rack your brain Quickly, I'll just copy this prompt and I'll go to Google Bad because I know Google has, you know, more font choices. Was this not? Someone's mic is unmuted. They don't. They don't. The entire church. I guess the person is in a is in a party. So the bride is entering church already. All right, so let's continue. So Google Bad, I want to see what Google Bad has to say about creating logo for children's party and typography font choices. So let's see. Okay, now we can see how bad Google Bad is. Google Bad is suggesting fonts and is giving me samples at the same time. Going to Wikipedia to get me samples of. Oh, this is amazing. So script fonts and telling giving me examples of script fonts I have. See comics and see papyrus, see calls, many of them. And it's showing me exam. This is comic sans. Showing me examples. So you know, we can always compare between these two guys. What is ChatGPT saying about this? What is um what is Google Bird saying about this? So that you come up with the best 
the one that suits you best. Also, um, quickly, let's run trust. Like, for web developers, hmm, ChatGPT can do a whole lot for you. I'm an application developer and I can testify to this. To take you, you know, it will take me months before now, months to write, you know, certain things, complex codes coming up with, you know, complex logics and all of that. <clears throat> ChatGPT has made it easier in such a way that I can, I can, you know, it can explain my code. Now there, there is a code explainer feature on ChatGPT. You can just copy and paste something. And before you know it, everything on that code, you know, even if there are bugs on your code, you can just say that, okay, I'm experiencing this kind of error. Can you fix this for me? Yeah, before you know it, your code is fixed. And quickly, I'm going to show us a demo of that. I'll just copy a code and I'll bring it on here. So this is a login page of a particular application I developed. So I'll copy, I'll bring it to your screen. So okay, so I'm coming to my ChatGPT and I'm saying, without saying anything, I'm just pasting my code. This is my code. It's a PHP code with some HTML, no CSS. All right, so I'll just paste this. ChatGPT is going to look into my code and make sense of it. Okay, this is a PHP script that handles a login functionality for an ECCD primary annual school census portal. Let's go through the code step by step. It's telling me everything I have on this code. So if there is a bug on this code, I can ask it to fix it. And I'll show you how ChatGPT can write codes as well. Kindly fix my code to prevent it from SQL injections. All right, so I'll just, under it, I'll just, I can decide to paste my code or just continue the conversation. So there you go. GPT is writing codes for you. Once you are done with this, you just copy and you go back to your IDE and um, that is it. You just copy and you go and paste. Then your job is done. So it, it, it has made a lot of things easier. You can you know do code explainer, you can fix bugs, and as well do several other things using chat GPT and using AI as a whole. So for customer care, for project management, project managers, uh, by now you should have learned how to use chat GPT. You can, let me see if I can just do one example for project management. Let's say, okay, let me just copy from my prompt. I give, okay, so help me create a detailed project plan for launching a new mobile hub. Yeah, that's a good prompt. I'll just paste it here and see what ChatGPT comes up with. So it's telling me that, okay, these are the things I need to do, project initiation and planning, Right now, this doesn't make sense to, um, maybe I want to present it to my boss. I need it to be summarized. Kindly summarize this into a table. So another error, another network error. So I'll just regenerate and there you go. Giving you the stage and the the task and the milestones. So um, you can go further and say, this is going to be, this is going to run for six months. Kindly a lot time frames to this plan. There you go. Now you have a time frame column, and um, you have your project plan that you are meant to rack your brain and develop for the next three days. Now it's done for you in um, in seconds. All right. So that's that for project management. So quickly, I'll just go back to um, our AI applications. Right now, I've showed I've 
displayed how Google Bard and ChatGPT work. I'll go to Jenny AI for academic research. Personally, I will not recommend ChatGPT for for um what do they call it for academic research. Jenny AI is a better tool for academic research, and Jenny AI is what I used for that video you must have you know seen somewhere on how to write academic research and to get your references. So Jenny AI is um, one way to do that is, is a tool, a very good tool to use for that. So I'll just log into my account. Yeah, so in a minute, I should be in and we'll see. All right, so um, <clears throat> one thing about Jenny AI is it has a free version. Yeah, I didn't say anything about even that. Okay, ChatGPT is actually free. You can upgrade to the premium version if you want to, because you can, down here you can see upgrade to Plus. Plus has <laughs> so many amazing features, but let's just stick to the free plan so that you won't have to you know, spend your money on anything, especially when you're just trying to, to go, get a hold of how it works. So we've been using the free version all this while, free. Google Bad is entirely free. So then um, Jenny Hey Hi now, you can upgrade Jenny AI, but right now for the free version, you have about 200 um, slots for your free version to generate. And I think to upgrade is like $20 monthly or thereabout. Yeah, but let me show you how it works. So this is a new document. And I want, um, I want an academic paper on global warming in africa this is quite you know quite broad but it's just an example of um, the kind of um what you do okay so even start with let me just create a new document for you to see i've created this document before so i'll just create a new document okay so this is my essay i want to write an academic paper on global warming in Africa. He's saying the prompt is average. Consider including important keywords. Okay. Um, in the past 10 years. Someone's mic is on YouTube. Kindly mute yourself. I'll just mute everyone. All right. So um, where are we, Jenny? So an academic paper on global warming in Africa over the past 10 years. I also want Jenny to create an outline, like, you know, like title, like headings for the sections. So I'll just do this, start writing. Once you click on start writing, so we are going to see how um, this AI tool is going to work using the prompt we have. Okay, so there we go. If you look here, you're going to see the outline of your research paper. Introduction to global warming, understanding global warming in Africa, climate change, a decade re review in Africa. Of course, over the past 10 years, it's a decade. So impact of global warming on African ecosystems, African agriculture under global warming, a 10 year review. Socioeconomic effect of global warming, global warming and health risk in Africa. How to mitigate global warming in Africa, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> so the beauty about this tool is as it is generating your content, you can accept or you look for alternatives. So this statement now in today's rapidly changing world, the significance of accurate and timely weather forecast cannot be overstated. Do I want to accept this? If I want to, I'll click on accept. It will accept that, then move on to the next to the next statement, climate change is a global phenomenon that has grown to be. So this is something you can use to build, to build your, um, your, your, your research. So looking at this, do I want to accept? Let's say I want to accept and mind you, my limit is going. So to use this, I would strongly recommend you consider the premium version when you, you know, when you have a view of what you want to do. So for all of these sections, I will do this by generating 
um, content. I can also check for alternative if I'm not comfortable with what was generated. Now it will reward it. One of the most significant changes in the world today is global warming. So this is a reference now. So immediately I accept this. I will show you a magic now. Once I accept this, my limit is going down. So once I accept this, now I have a reference in my um, in my journal, in my um, write-up. And doing this, I'll just go down. Look at that reference I have up here. Sierra et al. 2021. Now it has it has cited my reference at the references part. I can decide to change the format. Depending on the format, if it's MLA you're using, if it's um, American Psychology Association, upper format you're using, if it's Harvard, you can always change the format here. And it continues like that. Immediately it references another, uh, another um, <clears throat> what's it called, another journal or another um, research. It is going to give you the reference down here. And that is how to use Jenny AI for academic research. If you want to upgrade, you go here and you see $20 per month is for the upgrade. When you're upgrading, unlimited AI generation, you can ask Jenny AI assistant, unlimited citations. So you are limited if you're using the free version. But when you go to the, the, the uh, premium version, you, uh, you, know, you have unlimited access. So this is something uh, if you are an academic researcher on this call, it is something you really, 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 really want to explore. Yeah, so that is that for um, academic research. Auto draw for graphic designers. Graphic designers in the house, I have something interesting for you. There are so many other things for academic research, mind you. So that is just one of them. So auto draw. Let's talk about auto draw for graphic design. <clears throat> so I'll go to auto draw. And you don't have to sign up on AutoDraw. It signs, it gives you, you know, you can start drawing immediately. And what you do on AutoDraw is quite fascinating, I must say. I let's say I'm a graphic designer and I want to I want to um, draw or I need um, a vector image of a house because I want to create a logo or something. I need something, maybe an icon of a house. And I don't even know how to go about it. And I don't want to use someone's someone else's um icon how do you do that this is a free sketch sorry that is okay so i'll just go on with this i want to do a rough sketch of something that looks like a house all right my, my brother is lagging okay so i want to do a free sketch of something i'll go to auto draw i want to do a free sketch of something that looks like like a house it doesn't have to be fine just do something like this. And my, when you look up here, do you mean, now you have suggestions. Do you mean this house? Do you mean this? Do you mean this? Do you mean a hut? <laughs> do you mean this? You can pick, when you, when you decide on whichever to pick, you can, you know, just click on this. You can resize, you know, you can change the color. You can as well do some, you know, filling up. I want to fill. I want my entrance to be yellow. Oh, sorry, because the strength, the the strength of the fill is is so high. So you can you can make selections. You can export this as a whole. Yeah, as a PNG. So I'll just increase the size. I'll go back to my fill. But what I want to do is just to feel maybe uh, this. Yeah. So if I want to feel, just look. If you're a graphic designer, you should know about this. So uh, something that doesn't have a color. Let's say this. I want to feel this. So I can feel this as yellow. If I want to feel the roof as um, a different color, I can just, uh, I don't know if there's a purple roof anywhere. Yeah. Just something, just something nice, you know. So once you do this, you can export this as a PNG image, as a vector image. You can use it for your design, you can use it on your, your website and you know, all of that. So it is just a smart way to draw. It is just a smart way to have images, to make, you know, to create amazing, amazing things. Amazing things, I must say.
So this tool is probably the most amazing AI tool for graphic designers. I don't know. So let's say this is something I'm trying to represent and you know, I have suggestions. Suggestions, a whole lot of suggestions. So if you are if you are indeed a graphic designer and you you know you want to make use of this tool, you have quite a number of things you can do. Once you export this image, I should have, I should not be the one to tell you what to do though. Once you export this image to your illustrator, you can even change certain things about the image. The look, the size, the um the feels, the 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 stroke, the stroke um, thickness and all of that. So this is an amazing tool for graphic designers, web developers, graphic designers. Yeah. Also, AI has cut across a lot of our applications we use in graphic design now. Canva now, I hope you know that Canva now has a text to image um, feature, AI feature. You can do batch editing on Canva. You can do so many things, amazing things that are AI powered. So, um, so that is that, that is that. So all the applications we have explored today, Google Bad and ChatGPT, we have explored Jenny AI, and finally we have explored um, AutoDraw for gra graphic designers. Generative ads created, these are just, you know, I showed you earlier, these are things I have created using AI. The AI tools I have used, yeah, you know, I'll share with you at a later time, in creating this amazing, amazing creations. So these are things people actually make money from. These are things you can even use to beautify your, your space, you know, and they are not, you are not under any copyright grounds, except that your um, your AI tool provider is stating it that you cannot make a public use of whatever they generate, which is very rare. So um, also there, are, there, there might be some imperfections. Let me show you one. Which you may which you may not notice. If you look at this man's leg, you know it doesn't look like it doesn't look like a normal leg. Hmm. So you can see people having uh, six six um, digits and you know double toes and all of that. So there are imperfections. There are imperfections which brings in the place of you know human intervention. I can easily take this to Photoshop and fine tune it to my taste. I can fine tune it to my taste, remove what I don't want. In fact, this particular one, you know, if I show you the, the um, HD version after the whole thing, my God, you know, it is in printable format, high quality, high resolution. If you are printing it, you should, you know, you will see the quality. This is not high quality yet. So um, this is something you can, you know, you can print. And after doing this, what I did was to go to ChatGPT to generate a caption for this image. I, I generated a caption for this image and you know, amazing stuff. You can also sell this as an NFT, I hope you know. If I sell this as an NFT, there are also, there are so many online marketplaces where you can sell digital assets, your creations and all of that. And many of them are accepting generative hats now. That's the amazing part. They're accepting generative hats. Um, I know, I know Adobe has, has a creative market like that where you can sell, where you can sell generative ads. All right, so that is that about, um, so we'll conclude today's lesson. We have learned the fundamentals of AI. We have learned some AI applications. We have learned ChatGPT, Googlebot, Jenny AI, and, um, and AutoDraw. And you can go ahead to, you know, explore Chat GPT, Google, but all of them are there for you to explore. Just explore. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, you can always reach out to me on the WhatsApp group and you can also send a private message to me. So what next? After all of this, what next? Where do we go? Where, where do we go from here? From this particular training, how do we ensure that um, we keep in touch? How do I ensure that you keep learning and you keep exploring the world of AI? so that you get smarter. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, after this, we are going to have um, some specialized groups and it's, it will be based on your area of specialty. Yeah, graphic designer, you have um, a web developer, 
you are a writer, you are a content creator, you are a YouTube, what do they call them, vlogger, you know, there is a room for you. So there's going to be a group for all of this. Each, 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 um, each field will have its own group. So that the content to be supplied to each of those groups will be tailored towards specific needs. All right, as a YouTube, as a YouTube creator, YouTube content creator, these are the tools you need to generate quality content, to you know, monetize your, your, your YouTube uh, uh, channel and all of that. So we are going to break the group into specialized channels, specialized groups, so that we can you know, reach people with you know, special things. You know, there, there are some special needs, there are special things we need to, to, to cover. So we'll look at it together. So we are creating a community of AI explorers, people who really want to know about AI and its applications. So breaking out into rooms, we are going to, OK, this is you know, the part many people don't want to hear. But of course, there will be a commitment coming from you guys. It's not just about um, joining a call and you know, just sitting there learning. So you will need to pay a one-time subscription fee, a one-time fee of 5,000 Naira to join. So it's nothing, it's nothing big. So it's just like you are um, you know, buying data or something. So it's not something too much for you to pay. Because if I want to place a cost on this, honestly, it is it is beyond what you should be paying five thousand naira for. So in those groups, you're going to learn things peculiar to your own niche, and also there is going to be a general training group where people who are still trying to find their feet, trying to look for where they belong. You know, you just want to learn general things. Yes, you also be in a general group, but mind you, you also need to pay for the five thousand naira one time fee so that you show commitment. Imagine a group of, at least in the WhatsApp group, I know we have over 300 people. Yeah, right now on this call, myself, my presentation, and 13 other people are on this call. You can imagine how ridiculous. So, and you see Flyer, everybody wants to join. Wow, it's free. Registration is free. For this class, it is free. So everybody wants to join because it's a free class. Hey, hi, hey, hi, I want to know about AI, hey, but you're not ready to be committed to, to learning. So. I only need those people that will be committed to learning and they will be willing to pay for the, you know, it's a one-time fee, 5,000 naira you join and we enjoy the world of AI together. So also you're paying for my time as well because I don't think I have enough time to, to you know, coming up with lessons and other. So to show commitment on my part and on your part, there is going to be a monetary, you know, time involved. All right. So, um, for the payment details and all of that, I'll drop it on the group. And please make sure that it is only what you see from the, the WhatsApp group admins that you, you respond to, please. Pay, don't pay to any other person, pay to the group admins. I'll, I'll drop the account details on the group. Then um, we'll know how to go about you know, adding you to the group, just send your payment proofs. I'll add you to the, you know, the breakout classes. And trust me, if you can, if you can pay attention to this in less than three months, what am I even saying? In less, in less than a month, you are you are smarter than you are right now, honestly. Because you just see that things are becoming easier for you. You complete tasks faster, and it is way beyond um, just chat GPT or whatever, whatever, whatever. Chat. No, no, no. It's not just chat GPT this time. In fact, this is. Um, let me show you something on my screen right now. Uh, this is a course that. It's going to be like a welcome bonus. Once you join, once you join, like once you are a premium subscriber, a premium member, you are going to have access to this course. I'll grant you access to this course. And this is a loaded course, trust me. It's a loaded course. This is something I've you know curated. I've come up with so many things, everything you need to learn about Chat GPT. This is a, like a welcome pack for Chat GPT. Stand from what it is all about. And I think it has about 79 chapters. Yeah, 79 chapters, yes. And in each of those chapters, you have resources. It could be a tweet, it could be a YouTube video, it could be anything that will make you learn. You can imagine these are ChatGPT prompts a whole lot of them. 10 best AI businesses to start with ChatGPT. This is also one of them. So 
these are things these are things you really 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 want to learn these are things you really really want to learn so um and immediately you immediately you pay for premium you have i'll grant you access to this so that we we'll learn uh, you learn and at the same time if you have any questions you reach out and um i'll be able to i'll be able to solve any challenge you're, you're facing also you can see a list of programming AI tools list of writing AI tools it is not just ChatGPT. i mentioned it earlier list of sales tools digital marketers list of chat bot tools daily workplace design tools speech tools and open this speech tools. so there are so many of them so many of them that you need to learn so even if it's only this um welcome package you're you are, you are paying 5k for i think it's more it's more than that yeah so but yeah, so you get this for free once you, once you, um, once you are in in a group in a in a um, specialized group, which means you're a premium member. There are so many other things. There are so many other courses to share with you guys. For web developers, I have something to share with you here. I have something. To share. I have something on web development here that I can I can share with you guys. I have something on uh, 500 plus best AI tools. This these are web development resources. This is um yeah, this is five hundred plus best AI tools and prompts. Prompts that can give you what you want. Education assistance tools. You you want to see this. So all of this is just if you are in the premium group, you enjoy all of this. But if you're not, if you want to remain in the in this training group that okay, you you maybe you are just learning and you feel like it's not something worth paying for yet no wahala you'll still be here once in a while i'll come up with trainings for you so that at least you learn so everyone is going to learn so you don't have a choice by fire by force you must be on this moving train you must learn about artificial intelligence all right so in the next um nine minutes so i will just you can open your mics if you have questions if um there are things you're not clear about that you feel like we should discuss. Please go ahead. Um, please, I'll just we, we can do that by um we can do that by raising our hands so so that we won't have the whole room um crowded. Yeah, so I'm expecting our hands up. If you have anything to say, if you have any question to ask, kindly raise your hand. Okay. All right, Abi. Abi. Yeah, my question, the question I want to ask is uh, this class we're talking about for 5,000, what and what will be covered in that class? Okay. And is it, is it theory or you will practicalize and you give, give them, give us, and give the give assignment and you are, you read the assign, you mark, you read it. Or just explanation because it ought to be practical, not theory. Uh -huh. Demonstrate it practically. Where people will do, let us let me see, submit your own, let me see, then you correct. Is that like that, that, or is only story or theory? All right, Mr. Ebi. Yeah, I understand your concerns. And trust me, when it comes to paying for things online, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the least person you will see doing that. So the only thing is, um, is that with what you've learned today this doesn't look like just theories to you you are going to go deep into practicals you are going to see tools i will use these tools then you show you how to use it you use it use it to do assignments or whatever you submit your assignment for group peer review everybody's going to say okay these are the things i feel like i'm going to give my comments on it if it, there will be a need to go back and do all of that but mind you i'm not I don't want to start a class on te learning, uh, teaching people on graphic design, teaching people on web development. There's no time for that. So it is just, just about looking at AI tools, how to apply them. Okay, apply this into using, the, if you want to do this, how do you want to go about it? And you, you, of course, there'll be feedback on what you have done. So it is going to be practical as today's lesson has been practical. All right. So um, do you have any other hand up? Okay, I also have another question to ask. I want, um, you know, this uh, AI eh, you use for research. You All know, right. most of these uh, institutions, they have what they call uh, AI search. Hmm, yeah, when you, 
submit to the hand, they will, they will detect whether the write-up is AI-generated. Okay. I don't know whether any of these tools can be used to, to change that write-up so that, you know, it to scale through that AI detection. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, about, about AI detectors, about plagiarism checkers, of course, they are bots as well. And what they do is to look out for certain things in whatever you are doing. You can submit a, um, a unique write-up, something you came up with by yourself, to an AI detector, to a plagiarism checker, and it's going to be telling you that it's plagiarized. There is at least 2%, 3% plagiarism and all of that. So what you want to do with this is that whenever you generate anything with AI, take your time to review it. It is not just copy and you paste and you say you have done well, you have, you know. No, this lesson is not for, in fact, if you are doing that, you should not be in this class. If that is your aim, that, okay, I just want to copy from ChatGPT and paste and, you know, I get my work done. No, it is giving you ideas. This is how to go about it. You can edit. And also there is a tool, Simblest. You can, you can use Simblest to check for plagiarism, checking for AI detection so that you'll be sure that, okay, this final thing I'm submitting, at least has passed this, has passed that. If you're in the, if you're in the, um, if you're in the premium group, you learn better. You learn more on writing, especially how to write, what to do, and what not to do, so that you know some institutions that have AI. I don't think any Nigerian institution. Has, sorry, apologies. I'm not sure, but even if they do, <laughs> it's both against both. Yeah. So I think I, I've answered your question. People are not raising their hands. Don't you have questions? Let me check um, the YouTube to be sure that there are no questions. Of course, I know people will still ask questions after watching the video. That's why they're they asking for recording. Training on data analysis for the premium class. Definitely, yes. There will be training on data analysis for the premium class. It's going to be a group. And OK, one last, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. AI explorers, let me see if I can post plagiarism checker, simblest, simblest.com. Someone is asking. Simblest is C I M B L E S T dot com. I need to check for plagiarism. There are so many of them online, yeah, to check for plagiarism and some other things. It's actually it is not recommended for data analysis. So, what AI tool can be used for data to, to analyze data? Okay. These are things you will learn. These are things you will learn in the advanced class. Secondly, some of us don't know what Googlebad is, so it's expected to be introduced as one of the AI tools. Of course, I've done that. I think I think you have done that. Someone is making fun of me, Okay, Yes, that's the name I gave my beautiful, you know, AI generated um, character. All right, so let's take more questions. We have just three minutes to the end of this call. And um, in that three minutes, I'll share my, I'll just put my contact on the screen so that if you're not on the WhatsApp group and you want to, you want to reach out, in a minute, I'll share my, I'll share my contact on the screen. Questions, 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 concerns, queries. If you feel like you've wasted your two hours, let us know so that people will learn from, you know, from you. I also want to ask, uh, can the AI be used to already work on an existing picture? An existing picture? Maybe you, want you have to, your you personal want picture. Edit, you want to edit your picture. Exactly. You want to enhance it. You want to upscale exactly. it. Thank you want you. to put yourself inside suit as they are doing right now using Remy. Yes, yes, thank of you. Of course, yes. of course. <laughs> I've been seeing lots of corporate pictures everywhere. You know, people, you know, putting themselves inside suits, using it on LinkedIn, self. It's all good. You it's change just, environment, change of, environment. Of, of course, of course. Pimp up before, the, the personal before appearance. Now, before yeah. now, what we do is to use Photoshop. If you don't know yeah. how to use Photoshop, it's voila. But right now, AI has made it easy okay. that you can you can do various things like that, you know. 
uh, it all started recently when uh, I think that was last year. First play, there was this first play that came up, and people were putting their heads, you know, in wedding dresses and all of that. All this, uh, there are some Korean templates that people were using. And so AI has made you know easier to make a lot of things easier. So this is my contact being displayed right now on your screen. Yeah, so you can reach out to me on WhatsApp. I'll be available. You can put a call through. And if you have questions, further questions that you don't want to ask you, can always come to my DM and ask. So yeah, this is um, 2 p.m. And as promised, the training is going to last for two hours. Yeah, so thank you all for joining. I don't know if there, there are any other questions, but I want to believe we are you know, we are done. So thank you all for tuning in. It's, you know, those people who waited till the end, they are the real, they are the real people. They are the real, you know, students. Yeah, so it's all good seeing you guys here. And if you are not- I want to ask, I want to ask, are you a female or a male? Ah. <laughs> Your voice sounds like female. Oh. I'm a male, oh. sorry, I'm a male. Ah, your voice like woman voice. Oh. Ah, sorry, I know the woman, the <laughs> man I be. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, someone is raising a hand. Um, I can't see the hand again. But anyways, if you are raising a hand, you can still talk. See my voice be like my voice. So, so that means we can one, one can uh, bid for contrast now, do some and uh, and some jobs and get paid, right? With Definitely. This. The the see the profit making part. We've not even we've not even gone there at all. We've not even mm -hmm. discussed. How to make money doing all these things because all of these things are things you can make money see all these marketplaces fiverr hop work yeah it might be difficult to to you know get clients but there are several of them there are several remote jobs you can do and don't worry i'll share i'll share with you when you get the, like, you know when the, you know when we get serious with things you will see what i've done with ai and you'll, do, you'll see what i'm doing currently with ai and the kind of the kind of revenue that could you know come come from things like that. All right, so I see the emojis. I can see the reactions. Thank you all for yeah. for staying. Yeah, today. thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, so you can you can send a DM. I will. If you are not on the group, I'm going to add you to the group. And also, this video is going to be available. Thank God, I remember to record this time. So I'm going to share the um, the recording to this call so that everyone will see, so that people not people that are not here can see, and you, you can also share with um, your friends. All right. So thank you all for joining. We can uh, we can leave the meeting now. <laughs>